Have you felt like there is something missing within you? Something missing in general and you can't quite put your finger on it. Or maybe you feel this emptiness within and it never really goes away. And no matter how much you try to fill that empty space with things, with people, with situations, with experiences, at the end of the day, that emptiness is always there. Well, today in this video, I'm going to be discussing this emptiness within and give you some tips on how you can understand this space within you on a deeper level so you can actually face this part that's within you. My name is Tess and I'm with Uncharted Depths. I help my clients look at their unconscious parts within that are driving them so they can go from feeling stuck and small and move into their empowerment and freedom. So I call this emptiness the void. And I want you to take a moment to ask yourself if you have noticed this void within you most of your life. Did you feel it when you were a child? Or did you start to notice it as an adult? I started to notice this void at a very, very, very young age. And it felt like this deep emptiness, like something was missing. But I really did not know what that meant, what that looked like, or who to even talk to about this. So this void within is within everyone. And what most people, 99% of the population do is try to resist this void. They don't want to understand this void. They don't know how to understand this void. It seems so big, so mysterious. And some people may not even be fully conscious of it, but they know that there's something, this feeling of something missing. And so the way our world is designed is to try to fill this void. And many of us in our society are conditioned to believe that things on the outside will fill this void, whether you are conscious of it or not. We are sold the American dream. You grew up believing that once you reach this goal of the American dream, this void will be gone. Once you just get here on your journey, you will be fully happy and content. If you find the love of your life, they will complete you and you will no longer feel this void with it. People have addictions to food, fulfilling themselves because they're trying to fill this void. Substances to try to fill this void. Sex, relationships, cars clothes, consumerism, you name it, we have it. Instant gratification. Our society is built on instant gratification to fill this emptiness and void. But how has that been working out for you? Running around, chasing things, thinking the next best thing will fill this void within. But none of it ever will. Nothing on the outside of you will ever fill this void. So I'm going to give you some tips on how you can look at this in a new way and how you can start to become friends with this void. So number one, stop resisting the void. Get curious about the void. Sit with the void. Sit with the nothingness that you feel. We are born from nothingness. So where we come from is this nothingness, this emptiness, which is our true nature. And so we have this within us, but we are so scared to actually face that peace within us and all fear is a fear of the no self, fear of non-existence, fear of nothing. 
but this is our nature. And when we get curious about this and really dive deep within this, instead of resisting and pushing away from it, then we can understand it on a deeper level, come to terms with it, whatever that may look like for you. I talk a lot about our true self and understanding our authenticity and understanding the false self. And the false self is the personality that is cultivated. And our personality is cultivated at a very young age through our experiences and through our trauma. And so a lot of parts of our personality are adaptations, which aren't actually who we are. We may believe that we are our personality, but we are not our personality. That's just the character that we are playing. We are so much more than that character. We are beyond that. And beyond the personality, behind the personality, when you peel back all the layers, there is a nothingness, a no self. Now, this may be hard to hear for some people, and I'm not trying to make my perspective your perspective. You can take what you want and leave the rest. I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by our personality being adaptations and not the real us. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, I'm going to give you a really quick example. A child is three years old and he has both of his loving parents and then a sibling is born into the equation. Let's say his baby sister. He now experiences his first perceptions of abandonment because his parents can no longer give him the same kind of attention that he received for the first three years of his life. He has to share his parents' attention with his new baby sister. So a child will experience abandonment. Now this boy starts to act out to get attention from his parents. He starts to yell, he starts to scream. He starts to become defiant in ways because he doesn't care what kind of attention he gets. He just wants attention. And this becomes a part of his personality. But was this child this way before he experienced these first uh, experiences of abandonment? No, because of the trauma of abandonment, he then cultivates this part of his personality, which becomes an adaptation of his personality. And this will go with the child or be a part of the child and move into adulthood. It just might be expressed in different ways, but there will be an imprint on that child who moves into adulthood. But this is not who that person is. So the reason I'm using this is for you to see that our personality are all adaptations from our experience, through our emotions, through our trauma. They're not who we are. Underneath is this emptiness within. So that emptiness is a part of you. It's your true nature. Number two, if you want to understand this space within, you also want to understand the false self. And that's what I help people with. And that's what most of my videos are, are about is the workings of our human personality, the psychology of ourselves. Most people won't take the time to really truly understand themselves because it is a process and it takes years at times to understand who you are on a deep level. And so if you take the time to find out who you are and ask the question, who am I? The way you can answer this is to find out who you are not and truly sitting down and looking at your inner workings the way you tick, what your patterns are, why you do the things you do, what drives you. When you can start to understand the whole working parts within you, then you'll start to understand this emptiness within that is also a part of you. To understand this emptiness and void, the void within, we must also understand the false self and the personality as a whole. This undertaking to look at yourself and ask the question, who am I, will be one of the greatest adventures that you will go on. But most people will not do this. It takes a lot of courage and dedication to do this. Number three, start to see how you try to fill this void within. Do you go for the chips? 
Do you emotionally eat? Do you fill it with buying things? Do you fill it with spending time playing video games, right? What is it? If you start to get curious in your day-to-day -day life, how you fill this void, start to notice how much this emptiness comes up within you and, and getting curious and understanding the workings around it and how you've been avoiding it all of your life. If you want to really understand this void, then stop resisting it and go into it. What you resist will always persist. And ultimately, you are running away from your true nature. If you would like to learn more about this process, you can book a free discovery session with me, which I'm currently offering. The link to my website to book a session is in the link below. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and share with your friends. My name is Tess. Thanks for watching.